lady and we're going to do that very shortly and blow the trumpet sound and wave our journal please don't go anywhere we celebrate you sir. hallelujah praise the name of the lord pastor nat thank you so so very much thank you so very much and um i appreciate minister mercy amazing amazing worshiper hallelujah i'd like you to lift your voice all across the globe in one minute and begin to pray declare that this is your moment in the spirit is someone praying make declarations of faith even by the power of the holy spirit take a minute or two to pray in the spirit your night for an encounter by the spirit of the living god that your life will never be the same never be the same by the spirit of the living god hallelujah john 16 and verse 24 the bible says he that told you have asked for nothing in my name it says ask that you will receive to the end that your joy may be full hallelujah it is only those who ask that receive i want you all over the world and in this studio lift up your voice and begin to make definite petitions in the spirit I obtain grace Lord visit me in whatever area of concern is someone praying lift your voice and begin to ask by the spirit of grace and by the way let me let me just say a word I'm going to be praying for the sick and everywhere across whether this studio and all those who are connecting I like you to prepare there are people around you who are sick trusting God for a miracle we're going to be ministering the life and the power of Jesus and you'll be sending in your testimonies from across the world that tonight is your night indeed in the name of Jesus Christ now I'm here my assignment here is very simple I have come to prophesy by the Spirit of the Living God I believe in the power of prophecy and while I prepared for this session the Holy Spirit began to minister definite things I'm going to be prophesying across three or four areas the first very quickly is restoration and resurrection listen very carefully resurrection is very very powerful there are three incidences of resurrection in the ministry of jesus number one was jarius's daughter you find that for reference in matthew chapter 9 from verse 18 to 26 matthew 9 18 to 26 the Bible says how that Jarius had come to Jesus to plead that he would come to his house to help attend to his sick daughter. Pay attention now. The Bible says while Jesus was on his way going, he encountered another woman who called for his attention. We call her the woman with the issue of blood. And spending some time to deal with her issue, successfully he was able to heal that woman but by the time he was done with that woman and got to the house of Jarius, the daughter just died. That was a situation that just happened. And while they were lamenting, there was no point, you are coming again now, Jesus, this is over. Jesus said, get out of the house. In other words, he drove every unbelief out of his environment. And then he looked at the little girl and said, Talitha Kumi, little girl, I say unto you, arise. The second incidence of resurrection is found in Luke chapter 7 from verse 11 to 16. The story of the widow at Nain. Now this story is very, very interesting because this was a woman who was losing all the men in her life. She had lost her husband to be a widow and her only son had just died. The Bible says they were taking him out of the city gate. Now, in those days, if they took a dead body out of the city gate, that was the end of it. Just at the edge of the city gate, here comes Jesus. And he said, what is happening here? And they said, we're about to take this one case close. And he said, not so. He tapped them, brought the coffin down, and resurrected the person. Now, notice, in the first incidence, it just happened. 
in the second incident it had happened and they were about to conclude the third of them was the resurrection of lazarus in john chapter 11 when you read from verse 38 to 44 in fact the bible says lazarus was sick and jesus himself said that the sickness was not unto death and yet he was the one who said our brother lazarus sleepeth the disciples said if he's sleeping that's good for his health and he had to come plainly to say lazarus is now dead he said but let us go and wake him the bible says when they got to the tomb very interesting he wept and stood before the tomb and he said roll away the stone this is a very prophetic word i will do the resurrection but you must have faith enough to roll away the stone he said roll away the stone and and with audacity and precision he shouted and he said lazarus come forth there are many things we are going to be calling to come forth right now are we together now there are people who have lost opportunities lost relationships lost several organs in their bodies let me tell you something jesus is called the resurrection and the life and when we begin to pray for resurrection i want you to believe release your faith and you begin to experience supernatural miracles i said restoration and resurrection restoration is very important please look up to restore does not just mean to go forward advancement is different from resurrection or restoration for restoration to be needed it means that something must have impeded your growth and your progress to be restored means to be taken by the wings of the spirit and to be kept at a level where it will not look like anything ever happened for instance a woman who has been barren for five years if now she's in a position to give birth and she gives birth one by one by one it will take her another five six years to have her children but if god gives her triplets this is not delivery this is restoration are we together the first prophetic word for someone is that god is arising as a restorer and he's bringing you resurrection number two very quickly my second assignment here is to prophesy favor ha ah, someone say favor. favor say favor. favor let me tell you the truth this is a subject that i understand very well because i didn't have it before there are things that you know um you have tasted of their deficiency the pain of not having them and i know what has happened in my life and in the life of everyone here as a result of favor favor is very powerful psalm 102 and verse 13 the bible says thou shall arise and have mercy upon joshua selman mercy upon nigeria mention your name mercy upon joshua selman it says for the time to favor her yea the kairos time is come hallelujah favor is very powerful according to scripture there are three biblical indices that characterize the presence of favor in the life of an individual number one is unusual kindness number two unusual access number three unusual acceptance when these tripartite forces coexist in the life of an individual for sure the favor of God is upon you. Favor is very different from breakthrough. You know it is favor when it happens again and again and again. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. He says, and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty. Listen, I'm speaking prophetically to someone because you are crying. You are saying, listen, I've celebrated. I sang. I jumped. But sincerely, apostle, things are not going well in my life. The proof of favor is not money. The proof of favor is access to the hearts of men. When God comes connects you to the hearts of men and nobles they will come with their gift that grace was upon Jesus even as a baby and the Bible says the Magi began to walk from a distance they did not mind the inconvenience and they came to greet a baby holding gifts of gold of frankincense and of myrrh they came to greet a baby not an adult so it's not your age or your background is that that grace is not yet on you when that grace is on you men will live anywhere to locate you the magi from the east they came to locate that star and to bless jesus 
Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. The B part says, And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Favor is so powerful that it works with the power of sight. That means if that grace for favor is upon you, only a blind man should not bless you. For as long as they make contact with you, something from your head drives them to want to bless you. This is true. For those who desire establishment of all sorts, I have a scripture for you. Psalm 44 and verse 3. It says, they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand and thy arm and the light of thy countenance. Why? Because thou hadst a favor. Someone shout favor. favor. Let the devil hear you. Shout favor. favor. Deuteronomy 33 and verse 23. I hope someone's spirit is getting fired up. Deuteronomy 33 and 23. It says, And of Naphtali, he said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor and full of the blessing of the Lord, possess thou the west and the south. You don't possess just by luck. It takes the fullness of favor and the blessing of the Lord upon you. Oh, Joshua Selman, he said, satisfied with favor and full of the blessing of the Lord, possess thou the west and the south. I'm saying this so that when it's time to make that declaration, you receive from your spirit. I'm tired of this situation, living from pillar to post, running around with no helper. Favor. Favor. I believe in the favor of God. My life is a testament of the favor of God. Hallelujah. When the favor of God is upon you, it will work wonders in your life. This is the mystery of ease. When the favor of God comes upon a man, unusual kindness, unusual acceptance, unusual access, access to the hearts of kings. Remember, Esther was about to take a risk and go to the king's inner chamber without being invited. And in those days, if she stepped into his inner chamber not being invited, it would cost her a life. And she said, Mordecai, I will take that risk. If I perish, I perish. And the Bible says she stepped in and protocols were broken. The king lifted up the golden censer and said you could come. I'm speaking to someone. It, it, it may look like it's not yet your turn, but favor can shift people, shift things, and place you in a position where you will experience the power, the grace of God. And I speak that to your life Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 37. We're going to read 3, 4, 7, 9, and 10 very, very quickly. This is a very interesting story because it had to do with dry bones. The Bible says that Ezekiel was taken in a valley full of dry bones. And the Bible says he saw that those bones had been there a long time. That situation, a long time. That pain, a long time. It started from 1999. You thought there would be solutions. Now to 2023, and you're wondering, can there be a way out? The Bible says the bones were very dry. And he said, son of man, can this situation live again? Can it change again? Can this family situation, can this health situation, you've been diagnosed with cancer, diagnosed with all kinds of situations, can it live again? Even the prophet had to confess that this one, only thou knowest. I, I don't know what to say about this because of the kind of situation. And he said, prophesy. Prophesy unto these bones. You can prophesy over situations, not just over men. You can speak to situations and tell them, hear ye the word of the Lord. The Bible says the prophet prophesied and as he prophesied, there was a sound. Ah, every time there is a sound, something is happening in the realm of the spirit. There was a sound. And then the Bible says bones began to be joined to bones. It's interesting that the bones did not just come together. 
the Bible says bone to his bone. That means every situation under a certain sound knows how to bring itself back. Your destiny helper may be far, but he can come to you when a certain sound is produced. I prophesied as I was commanded and he said there was a sound and bones came together, bone to his bone. And he prophesied life again, commanding the four winds of the earth to breathe upon the slain. And the Bible says there arose an exceeding great army. Now please pay attention. Let's go to Exodus chapter 14. We'll read 14 and 15. This was the Exodus of Israel from Egypt. Hallelujah. Moses is standing before the Red Sea with the fearful Egyptians uh, I mean the fearful Israelites and then the Egyptians behind trying to come and Moses himself is confused. What do I do with these people? Millions of them, the Red Sea before them, Egyptians behind them. And here's what he told them. Very visionary leader. Even though he did not have the solution yet, he told them by faith that the Lord will fight for you shall hold your peace the verse of emphasis is verse 15 it says and the lord said to moses why criest thou unto me he says speak to the children of israel that they go forward this is the third prophetic word that god has come to bring a word of advancement that you have you have stagnated in a position for a long time he said ye have compassed this mountain long enough that you turn ye not what but he says speak to the children of israel he didn't just say they will go forward speak to them it takes words to move them to go forward You've been at the same position for a very long time in ministry, in life, no visibility, no grace, no access to nothing. The Lord has sent me here and has sent us here to declare that you must go forward. And listen, as we begin to make these declarations, I want you to believe, see yourself making progress spiritually, financially, and across every aspect of your life. Hallelujah. So this is my, th my threefold assignment and then I quickly speak over the sick. Again, I repeat, restoration and resurrection. Restoration and resurrection. Everything that has died in my life must come alive. It must come alive. I'm talking about myself. Don't watch me. Talk about yours too. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Restoration. 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 Lazarus, it's time to come forth. In the name of Jesus, my dead spiritual life, my dead financial life, in the name of Jesus, hear the word of the Lord. I decree and declare, I command by the God of heaven, come alive, come alive, come alive, come alive, come alive. Someone is praying, someone is declaring, even by the Spirit, he said, declare ye that thou mightest be justified. I command resurrection. I command resurrection in the name of Jesus. Mention every aspect of your life and begin to decree resurrection by the spirit of the living God. Resurrection. Resurrection in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hear me. We are still going to pray this prayer. I know that there are many prophetic things that will happen here very quickly but for every prayer point i raise i'm going to be pleading with pastor nat to just raise a trumpet you see there is a relationship between the trumpet and resurrection the bible says when jesus is about to come it is by the trumpet of the archangel and all who are dead will come back to life so as we sound this trumpet i like you to declare that everything that has died it does not matter how long it has died it must come to pass are you ready now open your mouth and begin to pray restoration resurrection restoration resurrection resurrection restoration and resurrection restoration and resurrection in the mighty name of Jesus restoration and resurrection by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus 
Is someone ready to declare favor? One of the ways that we access favor is by praying favor-provoking prayers. You can pray your way out of shame and reproach. The Bible says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. But that was not always the case. The mother bore him in sorrow and cursed him by her pain. The Bible says Jabez came to a point where he was angry. He said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast and that your hand will be upon me and that it shall be well with me. The Bible says the Lord heard him. Someone is about to pray. Lord, I'm tired of living a natural life, struggling as though I do not have a spiritual advantage. I invoke the favor of God. Let it rest upon me. Unusual kindness towards me unusual acceptance towards me someone is praying unusual kindness unusual access unusual acceptance someone is praying i receive the grace for favor i receive the mantle for favor in the mighty name of jesus favor in ministry favor in business favor in career let the advantage that befits the believer in Christ, let it rest upon me. Favor is a system of advantage. I receive it into my spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Once upon a time, the Bible talks about a cup bearer called Nehemiah. That Nehemiah was a cup bearer and he was concerned about the state of the Jerusalem wall. But because he had favor, he didn't even need to talk to the king. The king looked at him and said, why is your countenance this way? And he said, I am here serving. Whereas the gates, the fences of Jerusalem are falling. And the king said, I will write a letter and give you everything that you need so that you will go and build it. Favor is powerful. It can compel a man to get up, leave his own affairs. Listen, let me tell you this. The world is too wicked to excel with integrity without favor. Mm -mm. The Bible says we know that we are of God. And the whole world lies in wickedness. Whatever makes a man to leave his own affairs and invest his integrity, his credibility, his resources towards you, it must be divine. This is the grace I desire to rest upon someone. Listen, there are people by the natural course of life, some of us may be educationally disadvantaged some of us may be sociologically disadvantaged favor is an equalizer it can bring men from whatever background and give you an opportunity it happens by favor can we pray one more time for favor yes, sir. before we get into these prophetic declarations i want you to think of the very many aspects of your life that have been grounded and stagnated as a result of the absence of favor now i want you to cry oh god of heaven send favor open your mouth and pray god of heaven send favor over my finances send favor over my ministry send thou help from zion in the name of jesus is that thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yea the set time the time to favor joshua selman the time to favor joshua selman i decree and declare that the time has come hallelujah praise the name of the lord now hear me there are demonic forces that have been assigned by darkness to impede the progress of men jesus himself said i will build my church and he admitted the presence of the gates of hell that the gates of hell would try to prevail he said i desire to come to you paul speaking even i paul once and again he said but satan hindered us i hope you know that it was hunger that took israel to egypt until they became slaves there hallelujah hunger will always take israel to egypt in genesis 42 from verse 1 and 2 the bible says jacob was speaking with his sons and said i have heard that there is corn in egypt he said why ye look to one another he says 
Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get down thither and buy for us that we may live and not die. Every time Satan sees that God's people are at liberty, serving him, he will manipulate the economy. He will manipulate several things that begin to lift them and tilt them towards the corridors of compromise. Listen, I'm saying this because we are going to pray. There is a spirit in Egypt that keeps men down. And when God sent Moses in Exodus chapter 9, give us verse 1 and then we'll read verse 13. This is a powerful prophetic word for someone. Exodus 9 and verse 1. If you can see it projected, let's read it in concert. Ready? One to read. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go that they may serve me. Someone is about to declare his exodus. He said, let my people go. I'm going to declare over your life, but right now I want you to declare every captivity, foundations, every activity of bloodline, I dissociate myself by the spirit. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Everything connected to ancestry, everything connected to bloodlines by the power of the holy ghost for the bible declares blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us he nailed it to his cross someone pray patterns of limitation patterns of weakness patterns of death untimely death all kinds of demonic things open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray i declare that i am free every pharaoh must let me go in the name of jesus christ financial pharaohs health pharaohs in the name of jesus release my destiny hallelujah hallelujah once upon a time there was a man who was born blind and when the disciples saw that man they asked jesus a question they said, who sinned that this man was both blind? Was it himself or his father? They were acknowledging before Jesus that something a person can do can affect the generation before him. And Jesus said, neither. But this is that the glory of the Lord will be revealed. You are going to declare again, it does not matter how long the pattern has been connected to my life by ancestry bloodline. The Bible says we have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation. Open your mouth and begin to declare your release in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I decree and declare that I am supernaturally released from every ordinance of darkness. Someone is praying. Curses, yokes, demonic intrusions. I declare by the spirit of the living God, release me and let me go by the blood of the eternal covenant. By the blood of the eternal covenant, let me go. Let me go, let me go, let me go in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me go. Hallelujah. One last scripture and then I begin to declare. Acts chapter 16, powerful scripture from verse 25. The Bible says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Have you prayed? Paul and Silas sang praises. Did you sing praises? And the Bible says it was so loud the prisoners heard them. 26. Suddenly, like it is about to happen now, the Bible says there was a great earthquake. Listen. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. I love this one. And immediately, all the doors, not some, all the doors, all the doors, there are times that some doors open and some doors remain closed. Hey, all the doors, all the doors, financial hey. doors, doors of Whoa. fruitfulness, all doors were open. All doors were open. Open your mouth and begin to declare all doors, all doors, all doors, all doors. I prophesy and I declare all doors, Ephata, be open. All doors be open. All doors be open. All doors be open. All doors be open.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'd like you to prepare yourselves. I'm about to pray and speak over your life. For those who are sick, I'm about to pray for you. Believe in the healing power of Jesus. I want to release supernatural breakthroughs right now all across the globe, right from this studio. Now, hear me, please. There are two dimensions to the prophetic. Number one, the first dimension of the prophetic as revealed from Scripture is the revelatory dimension. The assignment of revelation is to give you direction, strengthen your conviction, and impart faith. This is the first dimension of the prophetic, where God reveals details about the lives of men. But the most superior dimension of the prophetic as revealed in scripture is the creative dimension, where you make what has no business happening to happen. Are we together? When the prophet said, by this time tomorrow, he was not revealing what would happen. That possibility had no business happening. It was the prophetic that scheduled that event. Listen, the prophetic, you see, realities are already in existence in the realm of the spirit. But you do not need them there. You need them to be made manifest here in the earth. The Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory even as of the Father, full of grace and truth. There are possibilities already locked up for you. The assignment of the prophetic is to give visibility to the speakings of God. Are we together now? Yes. So, if I tell you, you have 10 naira in your pocket and it's true, that is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic. But if I say in the name of Jesus, I schedule a season of favor. And whilst you are stepping out of here, someone who has no business meeting you, comes to meet you and blesses you. That is the creative dimension of the prophetic. Hallelujah. And let me tell you, it is on the strength of that dimension that many destinies rise. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. The Bible says, give it to us please. I'm about to speak. I sense a strong anointing in this place. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. And the elders of the Jews build it. And they prospered. How? Through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. They did not prosper just because of the dexterity of their architecture. They prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And the Bible says they built it and they finished it. When prophecy comes, you must finish it. Many of you have started projects you could not finish. You have exhausted your creativity. Step aside and let the prophetic give you an edge. Listen. In ancient times, success was always based on this tripartite formation of king, priest, and prophet. We have lost that pattern in our generation. The prophet will usually double as the priest. You see, kings were helpless unless with the advantage of the prophetic if they were hedonistic kings they would surround themselves with necromancers and diviners they knew that there had to be an advantage of the realm of the spirit someone you've been struggling just with your intellect doing the best that you know to do listen i believe in skill i believe in competence but can i tell you there are times where even if you're a fisherman like peter you are in the sea, the right place to catch fish. Having the boat, having the net, you will still not catch fish. At that point, you don't need fishing again. You need the prophetic. Jesus looked at them. He was talking to a professional fisherman who had paid his price. He was at the right location, having the right tools, but he still did not catch fish. Someone, you may be a doctor, you may be a medical practitioner you may be a professional you've invested in yourself but you see james 2 26 says that a spirit without a body is dead your business is only a body where is the spirit back in it your ministry is only a body david knew this about goliath so when he came he said goliath you come to me with your spheres and your bows but i come to you by a covenant there is a spirit back in me Many of you are doing many things that are right, but you have ignored the prophetic advantage. Now, the prophetic can be abused, but within the limit 
of scripture, it works wonders. Can I tell you? It is not every anointed prophet that blesses you. Prophets are sent to people. The Bible says there were many widows in Zarephath, but to none was Elijah sent, meaning he passed other widows and greeted them because he had nothing to offer to them. When Elijah was alive, the Shunammite woman was still alive, yet he did not do anything to her. But when he met the woman in Zarephath, that was the end of her story. I believe that God has sent us here by faith because this is a Kairos moment. I am a product of the prophetic speakings of fathers. I know what prophecy can do. In one day, prophecy can lift you and elevate you to a position of honor and grace. God is speaking to someone. You connected to this hallelujah challenge because you have cried, you have prayed and said, Lord, what is the way? Hosea chapter 12 now, it says, I have spoken in similitudes and I have multiplied visions even by the prophets. When we get to, I think, verse 13 or so, it says, give us verse, verse 13. Now, it says, uh, is it 12 or 13 now? And by a prophet, thank you, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Who brought them? The Lord. But the physical agent was by a prophet. You see, let me tell you how it works in the spirit. The Bible says the spirit and the bride say come. It is not the spirit alone that says come. When the spirit says come, there must be a bride on earth as a witness that echoes what the spirit is saying. The spirit and the bride say be healed. The spirit and the bride say be lifted. If the spirit keeps saying be lifted and there is no bride on earth to echo it, lifting will never happen here. Are we together? So the Bible says from the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. But that reality did not save anybody. Jesus had to become a man to come in partnership with that prophecy for salvation to be real. Wow. Wow. Are we together? I'm about to declare over someone's life. And I truly believe that miracles, supernatural manifestations of the spirit will begin to happen. You have prayed. Some of you have fasted. Some of you have cried. It says, and by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. Every time there was need for restoration, it was a prophet. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And he said, where fell it? If it was famine in Samaria, it was still a prophet. By this time, tomorrow. For someone you are at your end right now you've cried you've prayed and you're saying i'm a man of god myself i'm in ministry it looks like things are not working i'm a psalmist god has helped me i have songs but i cannot find visibility listen to me nobody lifts himself you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself honor is conferred upon you by another are we together it says, take thou Joshua, the son of Nun, in whom there is a spirit, and lay your hands upon him. It says, and take some of thy honor and give to him. Honor is transferable. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be known. I don't have the time but I want you to listen very carefully many years ago the Lord Jesus appeared to me and I shared these encounters to strengthen your faith my life is a product of many many supernatural encounters and in one of those encounters when he appeared to me you may have heard me say it again and again in my teachings light came from him light that no human should be able to stand how i did not die is a question i will ask him when i see his face in heaven and that light entered into my spirit and something supernatural happened from that time the entrance of thy word the bible says gives light and provided there is that light he said the light shineth in darkness john 1 5 and the darkness comprehended it not are we together now? It says, arise, shine. Not because you are tired of sitting. 
because your light is come amplified says it this way arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you he said rise to a new light hallelujah i'm about to declare because the lord gave me an instruction listen carefully he said to every nation and to every region i will send you that light that came from me to you there must be someone in that meeting that that light will be released upon too. He said he sent a word to Jacob, but it lighted upon Israel. There are many of you who were standing in partnership here with the man of God. And let me tell you, there are possibilities that will begin to manifest. There are pastors listening right now. By reason, you will never forget this hallelujah challenge. You will know that you contacted grace for your destiny. Are we together? What you are hearing, I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables. The things that we have seen, the things that we have heard, the things that we have handled. These are the things that we communicate even by the spirit and I'm going to pray for the sick in one of the encounters I was in a place that looked like there was a curfew and only sick people they were littered on the ground and I began to cry and sob and say what kind of thing is this and I heard the voice from heaven and he said to heal them all so when you hear of the miracles and the things by the grace of God we are people of integrity we don't have time to stage manage nonsense you can't you there's no need faking what is real it's an unnecessary labor to fake things when it can be real. Are we together now? So I want you to believe because there's someone right now, you may even have been appointed unto death, but life is coming to you. The resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. Let's pray for the sick now. If you are sick in your body, I want you to lay your hands. Probably someone is following right now from a hospital. You are, you are with a cancer patient. You are with any kind of infirmity. And in this studio, you can make contact for yourself and for someone. You have the photo of someone by faith. I want you to connect right now. I'm about to release the healing power of Jesus right from this place across the globe. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. I decree and declare right now. In the name of Jesus, the spirit that is back of every infirmity, I curse you by the God of heaven. I curse you by the God of heaven. I curse you by the God of heaven. Now I release the healing power of Jesus. Be healed right now. Blood diseases be healed right now. All kinds of infirmities be healed right now. Be healed right now. Blind eyes be open right now. Someone on wheelchair, stand up right now. Lift those crutches and lift that wheelchair right now. I command heart palpitations. Be healed in the name of Jesus. We change genotypes. We change blood groups. In the name of Jesus Christ. Deaf ears be open right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every medical condition hiv hepatitis we declare be healed in the name of jesus bone conditions be healed in the name of jesus asthma be healed in the name of jesus diabetes be healed in the name of jesus rheumatoid arthritis be healed in the name of jesus heart palpitations be healed in the name of jesus whether we mention your case or not in the name of jesus the son of the living god we declare be healed right now be healed right now and for those appointed unto death we declare oh death where is your sting and oh grave where is your victory we establish victory for you right now in the name of jesus are you ready to receive prophetic words now I speak over every closed door. Shabe katos kadida, embreke te katos kata, shabakata bakata, embreke te 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 te, shabaka katos kaba. Every closed door, I speak to you by the mantle of the apostolic and the prophetic. Efata, be open. Efata, be open. Efata, be open. Every closed door, closed by witchcraft, closed by ancestry, closed by ignorance, closed by disobedience, 
by the mercy of God be opened now be opened now hear me every man appointed to hold your hands and to lift you to your next season he said if there any man in the house of Saul that 